Twin Rivers Unified School District in California is selling approximately $102 million of bonds across three series. BAM Managing Vice President Todd Tomich joined us for this Credit Insights video to discuss the credit and its upcoming transaction. The school district is selling three series of bonds. Uh, two series of those bonds are new money transactions that were authorized by voters within uh, the district uh, in November of last year. Uh, so the two new money series will be the first issuances under those uh, authorizations. And it's important to note that the two series are were authorized by voters within distinct um, boundaries within the district. Um, in 2008, the district elected to unify um, several feeder uh, school districts and uh, the current layout of the school district uh, includes the unification of those underlying feeder districts. Um, part of the new money that's being issued in this uh, transaction will provide uh, middle school and high school facilities within the unified school district, uh, but a separate entity called a uh, SFID, uh, School Facilities Improvement District, was formed uh, for the sole purpose of also providing elementary facilities within that SFID. So from this transaction, it's $40 million for the elementary districts inside the SFID, uh, $40 million for the middle and high schools district-wide, and then they're also refinancing some existing debt for savings, uh, about $22 million as well. All of that uh, debt will be insured by Build America Mutual, all of it will be rated AA with a stable outlook from S&P, and there's an underlying rating of A-plus uh, from S&P. I think it's for all three of those series, is that correct? That's right, um, and um, you know it's important also to, to note that uh, the SFID is a separate and distinct credit from the school district in terms of uh, the security. So these are unlimited Avalorum property tax bonds uh, that were authorized by voters. And uh, with respect to the uh, unified district, the tax base of the unified district will generate the property taxes to pay those bonds. And then separately, the SFID uh, has a separate uh, boundary um, that um, overlaps with the majority of the school district but it's important to know that the credit of the SFID only is supported by the tax base of the SFID. And when you look at the size of those two tax bases uh, on a comparative basis, uh, the SFID accounts for about 80% of the tax base of the unified school district. And here, these are large um, uh, geographic, geographic areas for each of these uh, entities. Um, so to give you some perspective, the tax base of this school district uh, is approximately $18 billion um, for fiscal year uh, 2023, and the tax base of the SFID is approximately $14 billion. And how have the trends gone in recent years? What does you looked at the tax base? Uh, what did you see? You really seen strong uh, growth um, throughout both of these uh, districts. Um, I believe uh, from memory, the the 10 year uh, compounded annual growth rate for each of these is about 6%. So um, not dissimilar from what you've seen in the region, uh, in the Sacramento region, which is a strong um, uh, growth in AVs, uh, really underpinned by strong residential uh, components uh, within both of these districts. Since we're talking about California, we have to talk about some level of natural disaster risk. I know BAM takes a look at that in every credit uh, you review. Did you find anything uh, of concern here? Um, I think uh, it's it's fairly well understood that um, the uh, the Sacramento area is exposed to some uh, elevated flood uh, hazard risk. Uh, we took a close look at that with respect to this di district, and uh, uh, there was no elevated um, hazard risk with respect to flood. Uh, Northern California and Sacramento aren't um, uh, a typical um, area where you see a lot of seismic activity. Uh, although we do uh, consider, we did consider it here. Um, again, there was no uh, elevated level of seismic risk either. Great. So, uh, as you said, you know these bonds are going to be backed by a dedicated ad valorem property tax. But you did also look at the underlying fiscal uh, status inside the district. Um, how are there, how's the budget performing? Um, the district has um, been on solid financial footing. 
uh, the last several years, obviously buoyed by some um, COVID era support programs uh, that have bolstered liquidity. Um, uh, importantly, the district has um, uh, a relatively uh, stable uh, expectation for enrollment, which underpins any state aid that they receive. Um, so here, when we looked at the uh, audits um, carefully, we found that the district had uh, more than adequate uh, liquidity um, to offset any unexpected expenditures, um, uh, in particular in their general fund. Well, thank you very much uh, for the insights, Todd. Uh, BAM credit profile for this district is available on our website for any investors who want to uh, see some more uh, data and, and, and granular information about it. Thanks for your time, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Mike.